Well, to take us through the company stories of the morning, James Gerrish from Shuren Partners and author of Market Matters joins us live via Skype. James, great to go and see you. I hope you're keeping well. Look, another positive start to the session following a pretty good advance from Wall Street. Uh, what's your early takeaway? Yeah, more into you, Scotty. It is a positive open to the ASX. It's some broad-based gains playing out across the market. I guess the only, you know, it's being led by the IT sex, sector. The more high beta areas of the market are doing pretty well, materials and the like. And it's only some of the more defensive sort of interest rate sensitive areas that are struggling a little bit on the market this morning. Real estate, you may mention of. Um, so yeah, the positive open, Scotty. We'll take it and we'll, uh, we'll run with it. Let's, uh, let's get through to some of the uh, individual companies that have reported. Uh, BHP, uh, a slight smidgen upgrade for iron ore, a bit of weakness in other pockets though. What's your general takeaway from, uh, from the mining giant? Yeah, they, they, they produced their December quarterly production numbers today ahead of their, um, their, their results coming in um, the, the back end of February. So the production numbers today were actually pretty weak, but they were well flagged in terms of the quarterly numbers um, that they talked about or the guidance they provided for these numbers back in the September quarter. So, um, you know, pretty much everything was down quarter on quarter. It was pretty much down year on year. But as you may mention, of Scotty, the important thing was that they uh, maintain their full year production um, guidance. It's particularly key in terms of iron ore. It's obviously the dominant area of their business. It accounts for about 61% of their um, EBIT. So obviously that's very important. You also may mention of petroleum, there was a slight upgrade in terms of their um, production expectations in terms of that. So look, it was a good set of production numbers. BHP has been investing in new capacity um, over the last little while and, and FY21 um, should be a year where unlike Rio and Fortescue that BHP actually grow their iron ore production um, going forward. So look, a reasonable set of updates today. You won't see any downgrades in terms of full year numbers coming out of brokers tomorrow. So I took it as a positive, Scotty. Ansel is another company that uh, has jumped out of the blocks, a trading update, revising higher uh, guidance, which is always welcome. It's pretty handy when you've got a pandemic and people are trying to be protected when you go and make protective gear, hey? <laughs> Absolutely, it's the, the place to be in. So um, as you may mention of, they came out with an upgrade today. The market was looking for EPS for the full year of between at $1.40. Um, Ansel had previously guided to $1.35 to $1.45. So the market was already smack in the middle of it. Um, the market was expecting 65 cents for EPS for the first half. They've come out and said they're gonna do somewhere between 81 and 84 for the first half but the second half is gonna anomalize. So you plug those into expectations, you get something like a 10% upgrade um, to full year numbers. I don't think the stock's doing as well as that um, after coming out. So the momentum is slowing. It's probably more of a short term sugar hit in terms of Ansel's business. So you wouldn't plug it into your numbers on, a, um, you know, on an ongoing basis, but clearly it's a positive. Um, they've benefited from the pandemic. Um, and yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see the stock you know, close somewhere up three, four, five percent on the session today. I don't think they'll experience the equivalent of a 10% upgrade that um, might have been um, you know, thought of if you look at the, the actual raw numbers, Scotty. Yeah, you can see the Ansel share price coming off those early highs, up about 0.3% now for the session. Uh, James, I mentioned uh, no, about uh, the uh, update from Sydney airports. Now, it's no surprise, particularly given the domestic border shutters that uh, we've seen around the country, and of course, the international border is closed, that passenger numbers are down substantially. The one key thing when it comes to Sydney Airport, though, is when do we think we're going to start to see a normalisation in uh, travel patterns? It's, it's a million dollar or billion dollar question. Uh, do you ever take there at Shores? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the, that, you're right. That's the, the tough thing. And I don't think we'll know because governments um, you know, don't know when travel restrictions are going to be um, taken off hold, particularly the experience we're seeing overseas. So obviously they had a, a brief uptick in their domestic travel coming in that window in December that we saw where travel domestically at least was pretty free flowing. Um, we know international travel is a long way away. So these numbers are, are poor for Sydney airports, but I think you've got to, you know, you've got to focus on the balance sheet they've got. They've got a, a good asset base. Um, but again, I don't see the catalyst in the very near term um, you know, irrespective of uh, when domestic travel kicks up for Sydney airports earnings to, to really crank higher. So, you know, to me, we own the stock in our income portfolios. Um, we've bought it into, you know, reasonable levels into the pandemic. Um, you know, they've got a well capitalised balance sheet, etc. But I think to me, it's a longer term play. So I wouldn't be sitting here owning this stock. We're not sitting here owning this stock 
thinking that it's going to turn around any time soon. And of course, the other negative influence on Sydney Airport of recent times has been rising bond yields. Obviously, it's a yield play, it's an infrastructure play, it's this you know, bond proxy. Rising bond yields, as we've seen, uh, particularly over in the US, is a negative for Sydney Airport. So I hold it, Scuddy. We're up on the position, but I'm not expecting a lot from it in the near term. Bit of a longer data call option on the normalisation of travel, perhaps. Uh, look, uh, James Gerrish, Sean Partners, fantastic to go and chat. Enjoy the rest of your day.